good evening, uh, everyone. Welcome to Yuri Tielemans press conference on match day minus one, Belgium against France. I'll have some uh, people in uh, the waiting hall. Christophe Lenaerts from Belga. Please raise your hand also that I can see who um, asked Christophe. No, it will be, we first go to Ebi Bruzakis. Ebi Bruzakis from RTBF. M'entends M'entends-t-on, Yuri M'entends On dirait qu'on ne m'entend pas. Oui, on m'entend Ah, voilà, Yuri, tu Voilà, Yuri, j'ai toujours envie de voir ton, ton sentiment juste sur cette rencontre. On parle, il voilà, y a un peu la, la, la rivalité, etc. Toi, tu te situes comment par rapport, à, par rapport à tout ce qui tourne autour de ce match bon, Personnellement, euh, moi, je suis là pour jouer au foot. Et nous, en tant que joueurs, on est là pour, pour faire la part des choses. On sait que. Voilà, la, la dernière fois qu'on s'est rencontrés, c'était en, en demi-finale de Coupe du Monde et ils l'ont remporté. Donc, euh, donc voilà, maintenant j'espère que ce sera à notre tour et euh, ce sera à nous demain à, à faire en sorte que ce soit le cas. Merci. Ok, ici Jürgen Geril. Jürgen, Oriame. Oui, et Courir, Stéphane. Oriame. Hallo. Jürgen. Hallo. Ok, Jürgen. Ja, dag Juri. Uh, ik weet dat je die match tegen Frankrijk, die halve finale, niet gespeeld hebt. Maar uh, wat herinner je je nog speciaal van na die wedstrijd? Hoe groot was de ontgoocheling? Hoe diep zaten jullie toen? Um, heel groot. Uh, als ik eraan denk, ja, ik probeer er, er niet te, te diep in te gaan. Want uh, ja, als je dan in zo'n groot toernooi en, en dan zo kort bij de, bij de finale en dan misschien de overwinning ook, um, ja, dan, dan is de ontgoocheling enorm natuurlijk. Um, dus ja, dat de, is het enige wat ik erover kan zeggen eigenlijk, want dat is, uh, is de waarheid. En uh, ja, ik denk niet dat ik, uh, dat ik er veel dieper in moet gaan. We horen u niet, Jurgen. Jurgen, we horen. Uh, vraag opnieuw stellen. Jury, uh, hoor je mij? Ja. Nu ja. Oké, okay. over de twee Franse middenvelders, Kanté is er niet bij, um, Pogba wel. Um, je kent ze alle twee uit de, uit de Premier League. Um, ja, hoe blij ben je dat, dat Kanté er niet bij is en wat zijn jouw ervaringen met Paul Pogba? Nee, kijk, uh, we weten dat, dat ze een, een andere ploeg zijn met, uh, met Kanté erbij. En dat is een heel goede speler die, die heel, veel, uh, heel veel meters maakt voor zijn ploeg. En, um, die heel, uh, heel belangrijk is ook in de in, in balans van hun ploeg. Dus, Um, ja, het is spijtig voor hen dat hij er niet bij is en um, voor ons zal het wel zijn om, uh, ja, zelfs zonder hem, er, uh, er proberen iets goeds van te maken. En, en dat zijn twee, twee fantastische spelers uh, ja, die elke week gewoon uh, top presteren en, en we zullen attent moeten zijn aan, uh, aan, aan Pogba vooral omdat hij, nu, uh, ja, omdat hij er wel is en, en Kanté niet. Oké okay, Jurgen, dankjewel Christophe Franken, la dernière heure. Christophe? Bonjour Yuri, j'ai deux questions très différentes. La première concerne l'Italie, qui a eu beaucoup de problèmes de racisme dans ses stades il y a ces dernières semaines, pas plus tard que le week-end passé. Est-ce que, un, premièrement, tu as suivi ça Et est-ce que, deux, si ça arrive demain, est-ce que vous pourriez décider d'arrêter le match ou de quitter la pluie Perso, euh, bien sûr que, que je l'ai suivi. Euh, C'est très dommage que... Voilà, on, le, on le répète euh, maintes et maintes fois et, et c'est vraiment dommage que, que ça continue à arriver, surtout dans un stade de foot et même dans la communauté, donc euh, pas, pas seulement en, en Italie, mais, mais ailleurs aussi. Euh, donc c'est vraiment dommage, euh, comme j'ai dit. Après, euh, par rapport à demain, si, si ça devrait arriver, euh, on n'a pas vraiment parlé de ça dans le groupe, euh, de ce qu'on qu ferait. Euh, personnellement, moi, j'ai un avis personnel là-dessus. Euh, et et je n'ai pas envie que, que, voilà, que, que les, les personnes qui, qui font des chants comme ça ou euh, qui ont des, des propos euh, déplacés soient les vainqueurs de, de notre sport. Donc euh, personnellement, je n'ai pas envie d'arrêter le match, euh, mais j'ai envie de, de faire les démarches comme, euh, comme elles nous l'ont été euh, présentées par, euh, par, par nos supérieurs, on va dire. Okay. J'avais une, ah, une seconde question, voilà, si, si c'est OK. Euh, Yuri, euh, est-ce que tu, tu, tu n'as pas de gagné de match à part en Coupe de la Ligue en mois de septembre 
euh, il y a eu des critiques sur ton euro où, où on t'attendait encore plus fort, évidemment. Euh, comment est-ce que, ah, premièrement, tu juges ton début de saison et est-ce que tu, tu te dis que tu, as la, tu poses des questions sur la, ta meilleure forme Est-ce que tu as la recherche de ta meilleure forme Non, je ne me pose pas des questions. Euh, moi, tout ce, que, tout ce que je peux faire et tout ce qui est en mon contrôle, c'est mon travail. Euh, c'est mon travail quotidien, que ce soit en dehors du terrain ou, ou sur le terrain. Donc, moi, j'essaie de, de faire mon truc personnellement pour, pour aider l'équipe au, au mieux possible. Et euh, je sais que mes, mes prestations vont, vont suivre naturellement. Euh, c'est sûr qu'on a un début de saison difficile euh, niveau résultat et aussi niveau, euh, niveau création de jeu avec Leicester. Maintenant, euh, voilà, c'est à, à nous à, à sortir de cette phase-là. Euh, Peut-être que la, euh, la sélection va nous faire du bien dans le sens où, où tout le monde va, va être rafraîchi à notre tour. Donc, euh, donc voilà, j'espère que ce sera le cas et que, que le mois prochain, on peut repartir sur de, sur de bonnes bases. Ok, merci Christophe. Guillaume Ratz euh, le soir. Guillaume oui, bonjour, euh, bonjour Yuri. Euh, as, tu tu n'avais pas participé à, à ce match euh, en 2018, mais tu étais présent. Qu'est-ce qu'il faudra faire de mieux selon toi euh, demain Je pense que ce match-là, ça, ça s'est joué à un détail, euh, un petit corner, et, euh, enfin un grand corner, euh, le corner décisif. Donc euh, c'était vraiment, vraiment dommage parce que je pense qu'on n'a pas fait beaucoup. Euh, Beaucoup d'erreurs dans ce match-là. C'est sûr qu'ils ont eu des occasions. On en a eu euh, aussi, qu'on n'a qu pas mis au fond. Mais, euh, mais voilà, eux, ils ont eu ce, ce petit brin de réussite sur, euh, sur ce corner. Et, et voilà, c'est tout en leur honneur. Et, et demain, il faut, il faut faire un gros match. On sait que, que ça va se jouer à des détails. C'est toujours le cas dans des grands matchs comme ça. Donc, euh, j'espère que le brin de chance nous, nous sourira à nous euh, demain. OK. J'avais une, une deuxième question, Stéphane. Oui. Euh, vous, vous, contre l'Italie au mois de juillet, ça, ça avait été compliqué euh, face au pressing italien. Euh, Est-ce que tu sens que vous êtes mieux préparé à, à ça si, si la France décide de, de presser haut C'est sûr qu'on a eu euh, du mal, surtout en première mi-temps face à leur pressing. Euh, après, depuis, depuis lors, on a joué la République tchèque qui est aussi euh, très réputée pour, euh, pour leur pressing. On l'avait vu là-bas à, à Prague et, et on avait eu énormément de mal aussi à sortir. Euh, je pense qu'à la maison contre, contre la République tchèque, on a montré qu'on qu avait appris de, de, de ce fait-là et de ce fait de jeu. Donc, euh, donc voilà, j'espère que ça va nous servir dans, dans le futur et, et demain aussi. Merci Guillaume. Manu Jouz, RTBF. Vous êtes activé. Bonjour Yori. Euh... Didier Deschamps disait tout à l'heure à sa conférence de presse, euh, c'est la première fois que ça m'arrive de débarquer comme ça dans un tournoi et d'être directement en demi-finale. Donc c'est vrai que c'est un petit peu particulier, on a l'impression que vous venez pour jouer euh, un match contre l'équipe de France d'abord et puis un deuxième. Mais est-ce que vous, vous êtes vraiment dans, dans cet état d'esprit Nous sommes dans un tournoi avec peut-être un trophée dans deux matchs. Bien sûr, bien sûr. Je pense qu'une fois qu'on est dedans, on réalise le, le fait de jeu et, et, et l'événement aussi. Euh, il ne faut pas oublier aussi qu'on a eu un groupe très difficile. On a eu le, Dan le, le Danemark, l'Angleterre, l'Islande, qui, qui sont de très bons pays euh, et qu'on a réussi à, à vaincre pour, pour arriver dans cette demi-finale. Donc, euh, c'est le travail de toute une année, vu que ça s'est passé l'année dernière. Donc, euh, donc, voilà, ce sera à nous à, à en profiter au maximum demain et, euh, et j'espère en, en, en ressortir le meilleur. Ok, merci. Tim Thornton. Deux... Ah, pardon, pardon, ah, Manu. Deux... Pardon. Si je peux juste une, ouais, oui, une petite oui. deuxième question, pas de souci. Euh, Yuri, ben, la, la France reste sur un, un euro euh, décevant, évidemment, hein, avec cet échec, cette élimination contre la Suisse. Est-ce que pour toi, c'est juste un accident de parcours ou est-ce que ça signifie qu'elle est moins bien aujourd'hui qu'elle n'était à la Coupe du Monde Non, je pense que demain sera un match tout à fait différent. Euh, Peut-être qu'ils ont appris de, de leurs erreurs durant l'euro, comme nous, on a appris aussi. Donc, euh, donc voilà, ce sera, euh, ce sera un, un match tout à fait différent pour, pour ma part. Et euh, je ne pense pas que l'euro euh, sera encore euh, dans leur tête pour demain. Okay. Merci. Tim Thornton, Sky Sports. There's been some debate this week about Romelu Lukaku back in the Premier League now. How to get the best out of him? Uh, I just wondered, as somebody who plays alongside him uh, at international level, what do you think is the is the key to getting the very best out of him? And do you now measure him up against the very best strikers in the world? Um, 
Yes, Romelu is a is a really good striker. I think his his record speaks for himself, especially with the with the national team. He scored so many goals that um, I don't know how many. I I, I can't count really. I stopped counting when uh, when he was on 50 because that was an amazing record for him and for the national team. But um, I'm not gonna reveal all of all of his strengths also for for tomorrow's game, but. Uh, the only thing I can say it's a, it, it's a pleasure to play with a with a striker like Romelu because he's uh, he's always sharp, always uh, wanting to win the games, and he he gets us through in in many moments also. Thank you. Okay, that's it for uh, Yuri. Thanks, Yuri. Thank you. Merci. And now we wait Roberto Martinez, our uh, coach. Thanks. She will take you back to the dressing rooms with Jonathan. These glasses, fresh, fresh water. Thank you. Welcome, Roberto Martinez, on this uh, Match Day Minus One press Thank conference, you. digital. Remote, we first uh, go to Ludo van der Wallen. He has a question for you. Ludo van der Wallen from het Niesblad for Roberto Martinez. Ludo. Hi, Roberto. Hi, Ludo. Hi. Uh, it was three years ago that Belgium played against France in the semi-finals of the World Cup. Do you think Belgium is stronger than in 2018 or, is the, or are they weaker or still the same? Well, I think I would like to believe that we are stronger just because internally uh, I do feel that we can cope with uh, more players um, when they carry suspension or they're out of the squad. I think the pool of players for Belgium now has grown and as well for that nature is an extra three years that we've been able to play together and that what gives you is a lot of synchronization, something that you haven't got in international football. I think we always try to have a certain continuity on the players and try to work like you would do in a club uh, environment. So the understanding between the players is a lot bigger and we've been through a lot together. So in terms of experience and the pool of players, um, I believe that we are stronger than we were in 2018. And what about the French team? Probably you could say similar. I uh, do feel that they got that experience. Uh, probably the only big difference of this squad is probably the younger players that they've come in and then probably the the uh, the appearance of, of Karim Benzema. But uh, we had a very young Kylian Mbappé in, in Russia. Now is in a, a big moment of his career. And throughout with uh, Anton Griezmann to, to, to the relevance of Pogba and the options. I think this generation in French football, they got probably three uh, elite footballers per position. But um, I, would, I would believe that Messi, I'm sure that Didi, Didier Deschamps would, would, would think that his team has improved as well since 2018. Okay, thank okay, you. Okay, Ludo, thank you. Yves Teldeman, la dernière heure. Yves. Okay. Um, coach, uh, Hi, since yes. the game in 2018, in which you did not score, you scored in every one of, uh, in every game, 37 games in a row. What's What made, makes you think that uh, we can break the wall, the French wall, uh, tomorrow, which did not, uh, which we did not succeed in uh, in 2018. But I think that's one of the challenges. Obviously, we want to win the football game, but I think one of the challenges is to, to be able to be ourselves. I think we're a team that we we work hard to create chances to be an attacking team to score. As you mentioned, we got the longest sequence at the moment. Um, I wouldn't like to correct you, but I think it's 38 games since then. And it is important. It's important because it means that you have to do things very well. It's a, the French team are always very well drilled defensively, really well organized. But then you need to be always cautious because the moment that you lose the ball, they've got a world-class attacking threat. So I think as a game, is a good, as good as it gets, not 
just for our fans and ourselves. I think it's for, for the neutral fan. And this is the competition we want to be. And it's not uh, a friendly or a game with no significance. I think it's, it's great and it's the right thing to do to face uh, this French team in a, in a very, very meaningful competition. Uh, if I can ask a second one. Um, in 2018, you were very surprised uh, that uh, France defended, uh, was so defensive in that game. Do you expect them tomorrow to be as defensive as in uh, 2018? I think what you're going to see tomorrow is that um, both teams will have to defend very, very well when we haven't got the ball. And the attacking threat that both sides have bring you that. Um, it's not just what you're going to do off the ball, it's, it's then how you can control the game on the ball. I think it's a, a real complete performance. Whoever is going to get the win tomorrow is going to be uh, a perfect performance due to the individual quality that you have in both sides. But um, sometimes you, you need to get through the experiences that we had in, in the World Cup in Russia and the, the experiences that we had in the Euros to be able to get through games like we're going to be facing tomorrow with the experience that is needed in those moments and not just rely on the individual talent. And I think on, on 2018, France had that know-how and that uh, almost extra feeling after their final in 2016 to do whatever it took to win the game. And, and that's that, that was the difference on the, on the day. OK, thanks, Yves. We go to Christophe Lenars from Belga News Agency. Christophe? Christophe? There Hello? is. Yep. Yeah, okay. we can hear you. Hi, Roberto. Hi, Christophe. Can you tell us something more about uh, Jason Denier, who didn't train yesterday with the group? What exactly was uh, the problem? Yes, uh, obviously we were we were having two players that we were keeping in a different pace in an individual program. That was Jason Denaya and then Tog and Hazard. And uh, Jason Denaya just he was a bit overload. He played at the weekend, uh, 20 minutes is totally fine. He trained this morning and he's totally fine and fit to be in the squad. And then unfortunately Tog and Hazard couldn't be fit for the games and he's been replaced by Arthur uh, Theater and he's joining he's joining the 23. Okay, Christophe. Ja, dank u. Ja, die andere Christophe Lieberlo van het Belang van Limburg. Christophe Lieberlo. There he is. Good evening. Good evening, Christophe. Coach, can you tell us the differences and the similarities, please, between uh, Hans van Aken and Juri Tielemans? They are very different footballers. First, I think they both operate in different areas of the pitch, but um, what they both have is a, an incredible technical ability. There are players that they make you uh, play, and they've got this incredible uh, influence in what you do on the ball. And very different, probably, uh, Yuri is more in the starting of, of, of the actions and probably um, Hans Van Aken is a player that he likes to end in the box and is probably uh, an, a, a player with an arrival in the 18-yard box that he makes them of a, of a real threat. So both football is very different. Both players can, can play their roles in different uh, ways but two players that they are in the similarity of having that outstanding technical ability and personality of always wanting the ball in any circumstance. Okay, Thank you. thanks, Christophe. One other question, uh, yeah. Coach. Okay. Uh, with, a, with a big tournament, often is said that you need a really good goalkeeper, a top goalkeeper to win a tournament. This tournament is only two games uh, that we have to play. Uh, how important is the role of a really terrific uh, goalkeeper in the of course, you you get situations, but is uh, is the difference is in the boxes. Um, you could have a fantastic game between the boxes, and you cannot reflect it in the scoreline. Football is a low scoring game, and what happens in the box has a, a huge relevance in the final score. And there is nobody as influential as that as as the player that he, he has the final touch to the net and, and the player that is in front of the sticks as a goalkeeper. And we are delighted not just of the quality of Thibaut Courtois, it's just the moment of his career. He's enjoying his big role at club level. He's, he's been at, uh, at this uh, standard for, for a long time. And probably the last time that we 
faced the French team. He was named best player in the World Cup in 2018. And I would say that since then he's been evolving, growing, and it's a real joy to, to watch him play, especially for the national team. Thanks, Christophe. We go to Tim Thornton from uh, Sky Sports in the UK. Tim? Some debate this week about Romelu Lukaku, how to get the best out of him. As someone who's managed him in the Premier League and obviously at international level as well, what's the key to that? And would you now measure him amongst the, the very best strikers in world football? Is he the complete striker now? Well, I think obviously when you speak about Romelu Lukaku, the outstanding uh, attribute or the outstanding quality is, is his, his goal scoring numbers. Uh, he's a player that if you get it in goal scoring positions, his his conversion rate is, is exceptional. I think you look at the stats, the amount of goals that he scored in his career at a young age and what he's done for the national team is already the record goal scorer. And that's his real strength. So you get the best out of him when he's in those positions, when the team can put him in those situations. Um, obviously, I start working with Romelu Lukaku at the age of 19, as any player, you would see an evolution. And Romelu has become a, a number nine that he can do every single function. He can play with a back to, 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 to play. He can run in behind. He's got the power, the pace. He's got the understanding of combining with other players. He's someone that he can play with the pace and power, but with intelligence as well. So, of course, he's growing. Uh, I think his time... At, uh, in Italy, at Inter Milan, uh, give him another degree of maturity as well. So you're talking a player that is in a great moment of his career and his outstanding knack is always scoring goals. OK. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. Christophe Franken, La Dernière Heure. Coach, um, why do you choose for Artur Teat for, for this, uh, this selection? Because it's, it's his first time and, and it's a left-footed uh, uh, defender. So for you, it's a, it's a big hope for the, for the future? It is, yeah. Well, obviously, um, remember that Thomas Vermalen wasn't available due to the quarantine rules and he had in Japan. Then we had, obviously, Zinio Van Husden is not uh, fit, he's going to be out. Um, and then it was a, a case of being able to work with Arthur. He was with a squad in the under-21s. He's a profile that we follow very closely since uh, he, he started consistently playing the Pro League in Belgium. His move to Italy has come in a very good moment. He had a great weekend with an assist, with scoring a goal. He's playing with a lot of confidence and is a perfect profile for us as a left-footed player that he can play in centre-half or left-back. is a real good fit and this is going to be the experience of his life. Um, working on his development will be essential and important and probably was at the right time at the right place for this call up. Ok, thank you. Terminamos con una pregunta en español para que la cadena SER no tiene, tiene problemas con activar el micrófono. Uh, una pregunta para cadena SER, José Palacio. Ahora se juega en Italia, España. ¿Te gustaría enfrentarte a España en la final de la Nations League? Hola, José. Bueno, lo, lo bonito es estar en esta, en esta fase final. Y lo que es importante es poder estar en la final, que quería decir que que podemos vencer a una selección como, como Francia. Luego ya veríamos, la final sería bienvenida, pero siempre es, es bonito poder jugar contra España. Otra pregunta, ¿qué te parece la lista de convocados de Luis Enrique? Uh, no, estoy, no estoy en ninguna posición para comentar, no tengo ni la información ni el detalle que un seleccionador tiene. Bastante trabajo tengo con la, con la mía. Ok, we don't have any more questions. Thanks all, thanks for being Thanks, here. thanks coach. See you tomorrow after the game.